Hi everyone, it's Cindy from Cindy's Art. Today we're going to work on an ocean beach watercolor lesson. This is so light colored, I think it will work well if you're a beginner painter. And I'm going to put the reference photo up while I paint at times, so you'll be able to follow along and look at the photo. But I'm using Daniel Smith watercolor paints today. I don't normally use those. And I started off on an Arches watercolor paper. It's 140 pounds. And this is about a four and a half by eight sheet of paper. And I'm gonna start off with the sky. This is wet on wet, which means that I've wet the sky only up above, not below the horizon lane line. And then I'm gonna list the paint here over the next minute. But I do have the cobalt teal. I've got the manganese blue hue. I've got French ultramarine. I've got serpentine, genuine green appetite, genuine, and then undersea green. And at the very end, I do make rocks in this painting. And on that one, I used uh, lunar black. Yeah, I used lunar black. So to uh, start this off, I'm going to keep this very light. So I wet that upper horizon area. I, I wet down where the clouds are, and I'm not gonna put paint everywhere. I am just gonna add in a little bit of color to where I see the sky. When I first started with watercolors, I wanted to paint the clouds. I painted everything blue. And over time, I learned that one of the tricks of a negative type of painting is I'm painting around where the light is and clouds just happen to be white. They've got some light blue colors in them, violets at times. But for this painting, uh, I used some of that cobalt teal mixed with a little bit of the manganese hue and use those up at the very, very top of the, of the sky. And then as I work down, this is misty, uh, and I'm adding in some of my greens um, while I'm working in order to create more of a misty tone. But when, you, when I look at that horizon line going down towards the water, that is a greenish type of color. So I matched it with the color of the beach. And then, uh, although my sky is damp, I can go ahead and start working on the beach. And the reason why is because whatever colors I add into the beach, they are not going to touch where I just finished painting the sky they're separate so I can put paint down and it's going to run downward I'm tilting my paper but it is not going to go into the sky one of the reasons why is I don't have water touching water I've got a white line there on that left hand side between the sky and the beach there is a line there and as long as that is dry the paint cannot go there the watercolor paint will go where there's water. It'll flow where there's already water, you know, on the paper. And that's just the way it works. It's a great thing to remember, but I am letting my sky dry and I'm working on the beach right now. So I'm gonna look at that reference picture throughout my time and I'm gonna gauge where is the beach shore, uh, you know, where's the dark part of the wave and uh, beaches, they have these lines, and I'm drawing them now. Um, I'm using um, like a sketching motion to just leave some of these dark horizontal lines. And I'm doing that because that's where the water came in on the beach. And where the water comes in, it does create a, a darker colored sand. So let's continue on. You can continue watching how I am mixing that paint up above and applying it for the beach. Now I'm going to start to work on this shoreline where the water is and all I'm going to do is keep this super light. This is where that uh, green appetite uh, genuine will come in handy. It's such a, a nice, pretty color. Uh, the Serpentine Genuine also would work with this, but I kept this super light, and you're gonna see how I allow that light green. This is gonna be the lighter parts of the waves, 
um, you've got the whitest, but then you also you've got this light color, and I use the greens in there. Uh, and again, I am allowing that green to be in this misty area of the water coming in and also in the sky in the very, very back. In order for me to put where the waves are, I need to put where the water is underneath of that wave, which will make it look more three-dimensional. So I'm gonna sketch in a darker colored blue and a greenish tone uh, that I'm mixing together. I, it looks like I'm using the cobalt teal along with that serpentine genuine. And I'm going to add in some of the blue colored water wash so it looks more like water. And then I'm also gonna add in uh, some of the darker lines. One of the things that I am remembering while I'm going forward is whatever amount of water I have there, I'm only going to add in a third detail, one third of wave detail with these darker lines. It's a good portion to remember um, and when I go to making the rocks uh, and some of the darker lines later, I use the same formula. Whatever amount of space there is that I'm using, to paint, I can only put in one third of the amount of paint on there. And it works out being a good ratio. I'll have to cover that on another day as to uh, why that type of ratio works well. I'm starting to add in some of the shadows now along the beach. I like to sketch out some of my lightest colors uh, in my painting overall, just to get a feel for, okay, how's this gonna look? How's this gonna work? Do I like these color balances? I love manganese blue hue. Well, I would add that all day long, but this painting, I thought, you know, I think I wanna catch some of those greens in there and try this. And uh, Daniel Smith watercolor paints are newer for me. I'm trying to stretch myself and try different things. And, uh, you know, if you're a beginner, one of the things that I'm doing is learning how this paint reacts with water. And let me just tell you one quick thing about Daniel Smith. Uh, if I wanted a lot of texture um, and I wanted to build that in, Daniel Smith would be a great paint to do that. And what I mean is it granulates. When I add water into some of the paints of Daniel Smith, the paints will break up on their own. And let me tell you, Serpentine Genuine, Serpentine Appetite Genuine that I listed up there, it has yellows, it has greens and touches of blue in that green tube of paint. So when I am putting it on my paper and I have water on there, these little specks of paint are gonna spread out and I'm gonna see those yellows and those blues and those greens is crazy. So I just want to tell you that because uh, as I've started off with watercolors over the last seven years, 
One of the things I've done is to use Holbein paint, which is an excellent quality paint. I love it and I will continue to use it, but I'm challenging myself as an artist to try other types of paint because they have different types of reactions. So um, I'll let you in on some of those journeys and uh, what I'm mixing and playing with so you can try out some different techniques. But for today, we're using Daniel Smith. So I'm gonna uh, focus in, pick up some where these dark uh, lines are, where the shadows are, continue to lay those in. I really like this painting because it's so light, it's not heavy, and I like trying out some easy paintings here and there. Um, I just remember when I was starting off, I wanted some simple things that I could work on that wouldn't intimidate me. Um, and so this painting, this will not intimidate you, and you can always flip the paper over with arches. I have used the back of the painting, uh, the back of the paper for a painting if I goofed up. Uh, but I'll tell you another thing that I do is I challenge myself to finish a picture even if I don't like it. And this one, I like it. So I'm going to look real quick at the sky above. And as it dried, uh, it's really lightened up. Whenever I put paint down on paper, it's going to be 15% less of the strength of what I'm seeing. This blue right here, when it dries, it's going to be a 15% lighter color than what you're seeing. 
So I am going back in and I'm wanting to emphasize some of the sky more. So I'm going to add in a, a little bit of those uh, colors up in the sky just very lightly. This is wet on wet and then I'm going to continue adding in a final detail for this painting. All right, we are ready to work on the rocks. I am so glad. So the final part of this, all I did was take a very small brush with some neutral, or no, I used lunar black. Uh, whenever I use black in um, Holbein, I'm using neutral in here. It is lunar black and it's a really nice color. It has a tiny, 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 tiny bit of like a purplish tone in it. So anyway, I was looking at my photo and identifying where some of those rocks might be or where some of the drag lines are uh, for on the beach or in the water. And uh, I'm going to add in enough detail where you can say, oh, that's a wave out there. I want to suggest it. I don't have to have all of the exact facts. And that's something that I've had to work with myself. You're going to see some of my paintings it's almost like I'm painting a photo and I really enjoy that. But then I will make myself try looser paintings. And I just want to encourage you to try different things. It's one of the ways that you're going to find out what types of paintings that you like to paint and ultimately what type of artist you are. So we're going to finish up. I want to encourage you uh, to hit the subscribe button like uh, this video if you've enjoyed your time with me i always enjoy my time with you guys and i so appreciate all of your feedback and you joining me on the community page for the polls and i look forward to seeing you next time